and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our brand new Fall Leaves Background Stencils. We are so excited about these stencils. They are a set of two that you layer to create a really beautiful pattern and we're going to be showing you a couple of ways of using these today. The first thing we're going to do is ink these up in two colors that are somewhat similar. So here we have a piece of cardstock that's five and a half by four and a quarter, and we're going to take this little background here and line it up. I was just kind of taking a look to see how I wanted it to look on my piece. We're gonna hold these little magnets down that's gonna hold it in place, or you could use some low tack tape, like washi tape to hold your stencils in place. And we're gonna ink this up with some carrot ink, which is a nice bright orange. Now the cool thing about this stencil is that you could do alternating colors like we're gonna do with this one this time, but you could also just do one color and create more of a monochromatic pattern, which would be really beautiful too. So you can see here I'm inking all over the stencil and it's okay when you ink that parts are darker or lighter. That's what's gonna make it look really pretty and dynamic when you lift the stencil up. And here is my favorite part. I mean, look how pretty that looks. And that was all done with one color of ink. So now as I take the other stencil, I'm gonna line it up. And what's really nice is you can line up those little berries on the twig, or you can also line up the little veins in the leaf. So it's pretty easy to get these two to line up. Once we have that in perfect placement, we can put our magnets to hold it in place, or once again, some washi tape or painter's tape. And then we're gonna ink it with a little bit of a darker orange. So this is pumpkin spice. So here we're staying within this orange color family, but we're just gonna do dark and light. So once again, I'm just gonna ink over this whole stencil and I'm not too worried if some parts are darker and some parts are lighter because that's what's going to give it that beautiful inked look. Now my favorite part, we're going to lift up that stencil and oh my gosh, it's just gorgeous. Look how pretty that is. So next I wanted to show you what would happen if you flip the stencils, meaning we're going to do the darker orange on the one that has the berries and the lighter orange on the other stencil. It's gonna give you a slightly different look just depending on what you're going for. So here you can see we're inking up with that nice dark orange, then we're gonna lift up our stencil, and then we're gonna ink up with the lighter orange. And then you'll see that now the berries and the veins are gonna be the darker one, and the rest of it's gonna be lighter. And here's a comparison between these two backgrounds that we created, and you can see the little subtle differences between the two of them, and it's really fun to mix and match. So first, Shari is gonna show you how to make a beautiful card, and then I'll be up to show you how to step up this stencil just a little bit. I'm going to be creating a background using the new Fall Leaves background stencil, and I'm starting out with just some Nina white cardstock. I've put a little bit of removable adhesive onto the back of it so that it will stick to my make art station here. And then I'm going to use the magnets with the mat to hold the stencil in place. So this stencil is a two-part stencil. The second stencil will fill in the voids that this one creates. And for each one, I'm going to be using two colors of ink. So for this first one, I'm using carrot ink as my lighter color and pumpkin spice as my darker. So I'm just going to apply the ink in little areas all around the stencil, making sure that on the larger leaves, I have two colors. So when I add my second color, I'm gonna fill in the rest of the leaf. So that's sort of the method to the way I'm applying the ink. All those little areas, they're gonna get colored in with one color or the other. Now I'm going in with that pumpkin spice, which is the darker, and you can see how I'm blending the two ink colors together, especially on those big leaves. So with this second color, I'm just going in and making sure that I fill in all those openings that I left white from the first one. And just moving my magnets around to get them out of my way as I work my way around the stencil. I'm obviously making a much larger background, but I will be cutting it down. For the second one, you just wanna turn it, make sure those images line up in those white voids that were left from the first one. And also, you can see those clusters of three leaves. They have a little detail on the inside that came from that first stencil I used. And also, the little branches line up with the little circular berries that were inked from that first stencil. For the second one, I'm using guava and cranberry so that I can get some reddish leaves. Again, I'm starting with the lightest one, which is guava, and just working my way around, making sure on those large leaves I have one color that will fade into another. 
And then of course, just making little areas of this color around on those smaller leaves. Now to use that cranberry, which is really nice and dark, but once it kind of soaks into the paper, you get this really pretty red color and you're gonna have this really bright fall colored background to use for the card. Again, I'm just making sure that I fill in all those little white spaces and making sure I get all those little leaves and details. And look at that beautiful background. I'm using the outside in stitch rectangle to cut out the panel that's going to go on my card base. This will be a little smaller than an A2 size card, so I'll have a little bit of a colored border around it. The card base is cut from some chili pepper cardstock, and I've put foam tape all over the back of the stenciled panel so that it's going to pop up from that card base a little bit and you'll get that nice red border around the outside edges. For the sentiment on this card, I'm going to be combining a die cut as well as a stamp sentiment. So I'm using the giant thank you die. I have cut that from some gold sparkle cardstock from the holiday pack and also some ground coffee. I'll layer those together. So I'm just gonna add some liquid glue to the back of that brown one and I'm going to offset it so you get this really fun sparkly gold drop shadow behind that sentiment. For the rest of the sentiment, I'm using the thanks, thanks, thanks stamp set and using the stamps that say for being awesome. And I'm just lining those up on this little banner that I've cut from some canned pumpkin cardstock. I'm lining this up towards the left side of the banner and I'm going to white emboss this. So I'm adding a little bit of anti-static powder so that the embossing powder only sticks to my sentiment. I'm stamping it with some clear embossing ink. And then I'll add that white embossing powder. Then I'll take my heat tool and heat that up till it's all melted. You get that really bright white sentiment on the banner. And then to trim it down, I'm just going to use the same banner die and I'm going to line it up to where I'm going to cut off the excess on the right side and get that little banner tail. So this is a good way to make a custom length banner to fit your sentiment. I've added some foam squares all over the back of this die cut sentiment so it will pop up off that really bright background. And I'm just going to line that up a little bit closer to the top. I'm using my grid mat to make sure everything looks pretty straight. And then I'm going to use some foam squares to do the same thing with the little banner that's going to line up right underneath that thank you. So it says thank you for being awesome. And then to finish it off, I'm adding some gold stickles glitter just to some of the dots that's on that background that the stencil created. And then here is my finished card and I just think it is so beautiful and it makes me so ready for fall. Thank you so much for this gorgeous card, Shari. Oh my goodness, I love that bold pattern you created and that beautiful shading, it's just stunning. And next up, what I'm gonna do is create a little bit of a softer pattern. And we're gonna be using these Lawn Font ink colors. And I absolutely love stenciling with our ink colors. I just feel like it turns out so nice every time I use them. So we're gonna move these colors out of the way and then I'm gonna start off with a really big piece of cardstock because I wanna be able to decide exactly where I'm gonna die cut this pattern. So I'm just gonna fill in the whole thing. And and we're going to start off with our darkest color here, which is that pumpkin spice color. And I'm just going to kind of randomly ink different areas of the stencil. And I'm not being too careful here. I'm just kind of inking areas. It's okay if some of the color gets into another area. And then we're going to move on to a little bit of a lighter orange. And so we're going to be creating really cool gradients across different parts of these leaves. And you can easily do this with a foaming blending tool or a blender brush or a little finger dauber um, and just build in the color in different sections. And don't 
don't worry if the colors start to overlap a little bit because that's what's gonna make it look really, really cool. So there I brought in Peachy Cane, which is a little bit of a pinkier ink, and that's what's gonna make this background feel a little softer and a little bit different. So we've got those colors there. You can see I'm taking a little peek and making sure that it's looking okay. And now I thought, okay, yes, I'm gonna bring in this light green. Not exactly a fall color, but I think it really brightens up the whole pattern. And what we're gonna do is bring a little yellow over that green to kind of help it fit into this cool pattern. The number two pencil ink is gonna be our brown for this. I didn't want a very dark brown, I wanted a yellowy brown and that's perfect. And then here you can see I'm going back and forth to some of the colors and making sure I fill in every little section of this stencil and look at that, oh, isn't that so pretty? Now we're gonna take out the second stencil and we're gonna line that up and it's nice and easy to line up because you can line up the little berries. You'll see I was kind of turning mine around to get it in the right position. Now we can line up the berries and those little details for the leaves. And we're gonna be going in with a little bit more of that peachy keen because I'm doing the berries in that pinky color and so I'm adding a bunch of that pink color onto some of the leaves too to just kind of help tie it into the pattern. And then here we're gonna start adding on the orange with the carrot and then the yellow with the sunflower building out these really cool fall leaves. Next, we'll bring in the green color and I'm gonna go much heavier on the green over those little details for the leaves because I wanna make sure they stand out. So I really inked over those. And then we're gonna bring in that number two pencil as our brown. And I really like to go over the acorns with the brown a lot. So when I find those, I add a little brown in that area, a little brown there. I mean, there's no right and wrong way to create a pattern like this. It's just gonna look so cool. And now we're gonna peel up that stencil. Oh, this is my favorite part. It's like worth all the work when you lift it up. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, I love it so much. Now, this pattern is great as it is, but I wanted to do something special with some stencil paste. So I'm gonna take out one of the stencils and it's gonna be the one that has the little berries and like little extra details. And we're gonna line that up and we're gonna be using some fairy dust stencil paste. So we'll take the stencil and line it up with what we've already inked up. Then we can hold it in place with those magnets and then start to add the fairy dust stencil paste. Now, one of the things I love about the fairy dust in particular is that it's clear with glitter in it. That means that you can see through it. So you can add it to any kind of cool things that you've inked and colored. In this case, we're gonna do this with this adorable pattern. So we're just gonna take that on and then with this palette knife, we'll just smear it down. So I kind of added a glob to the top and then I'm gonna keep smearing that glob down just like that. And so we're gonna go across the whole thing, smearing it and playing around with the areas. Now I'm only going to be adding the fairy dust to one of these stencils. It would look really cool if you did both, but there's something about some of them having the glitter and some not that I really, really like. And a bunch of girls from the design team did this too. And I just think it's just so pretty. And you can just see that beautiful glitter already making those inked colors just pop. So here is a little tip for the stencil paste. As soon as I'm done smearing my stencil paste off and I reveal my hard work, I go straight to the sink and wash them off. That way my stencil paste doesn't dry on them and it's really easy to get it off that way. So I definitely recommend as soon as you've used your stencil paste, run out over your sink, wash it off, let it dry, and then come back and admire your handiwork. And here you're gonna see, we're gonna lift up that stencil and look how beautiful this is. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna show you a little close up there of that beautiful glitter just shimmering and shining Oh, just so stunning. I think I could look at this all day. Next, I'm going to set this aside to dry. And once it's all dry, we can do some die cutting. And we're gonna cut this with one of the outside in stitched rectangles. This is the largest one. We'll run that through the die cut machine. And it's gonna die cut it beautifully, especially because we let that stencil paste dry all of the way. Now here we're gonna cut some raspberry cardstock to five and a half by four and a quarter. And that's gonna be our card base that this piece is going to lay on. And then next up, we're gonna do some rainbow stamping. So I'm recreating a card by Grace that's just stunning and she did some rainbow stamping I thought was so fun. So we're gonna do that right now. And we have raspberry ink, pumpkin spice, sunflower, and cilantro. And so here I've got my word grateful that's from the Scripty Autumn Sentiments and I'm gonna ink up my letters just a little bit at a time. So I did the purple at the beginning there, then my orange, my yellow, and then green at the end. And so I'm overlapping the colors just a little bit. I'm not having to be too careful with it or anything. And then I'm gonna stamp. 
Whenever I do this rainbow style of stamping, I always like to stamp it twice for two reasons. I want it to be a nice crisp image, but it also helps the blend between the two colors because as you do it the second time, it won't be exactly like the first and that's going to help those colors all blend into each other and really look like a cool gradient. So I went ahead and added all my colors. We're going to stamp down again and look how cool that is. And you can do this with any sentiment, with any rainbow of ink colors or even like a gradient from light to dark of a blue or a green. Um, and I just love how that looks. And so we're going to take the coordinate die for that and we're gonna die cut that and then here you're gonna see how beautiful this looks I kind of think I'm gonna stamp all of my sentiments in rainbow now look at that oh I love it okay so now we've created this really cool background and I love how Shara used it as a way to highlight a die cut sentiment but we're gonna do is we're gonna create a cool scene so here we're gonna die cut a stitch circle frame and we're gonna die cut that out of some paper bag cardstock and that's the largest one. And then we're gonna take the largest of the outside in stitched rectangles and die cut some vellum. And those two work perfectly together so that you can layer one behind the other. Then we'll add some tape runner to that stenciled panel and layer that onto the raspberry cardstock. And then we're gonna add some liquid glue to the back of that paper bag scalloped frame. And that's how we're gonna attach that vellum. And I'm doing just a very thin little line right along the inside and then we can just put that vellum right there. And we're gonna have this beautiful area to create a scene, but that vellum is gonna let us see the pattern behind it. And that's why I love this so much. So we're not gonna cover up that whole beautiful pattern with cardstock, we're gonna let it shine through the vellum, but the vellum is just going to diffuse it a little bit. Now for this card, we're going to take out our perfectly wicked cats, which are the cutest little cats, super cute for Halloween. But guess what? If we combine them with the fall images from You Autumn Know, now we can have fall leaf cats instead of just fall leaf mice, which is so fun. So I went ahead and stamped, colored, and die cut images from both sets. So we've got leaves from the sets and cats from the other ones. And now we're going to mix and match these sets to create a totally different look. So I love to do this because it breathes new life into your stamp sets. All of a sudden, Halloween cats, are fall cats or they could be Christmas cats or birthday cats or you can keep coming up with cool ideas. Now here I'm taking scissors and I'm just cutting right between the cat's paws and then I'm going to layer the little rake in there so it really looks like he's holding them. So that's really fun to do and really easy. Just cut along the black line between the paws and then just tuck that little rake in. And then I'm adding everybody on here with just tape runner onto this scene and then this cat here is going to look like he's jumping into the fall leaves which is so much fun. Next, we'll add our fall rainbow grateful there to the top, and we've got to finish up the sentiments. So in the scripty autumn sentiments, there's little words that go along with the more large scripted words. And so here we're going to say for friends like you. So we're going to take out a simple wavy banner, and we're going to die cut that same raspberry cardstock that we have on the base. And then we're going to do some white heat embossing. So I'm going to prep it with an anti-static powder tool so that our embossing powder only sticks to this nice sticky ink that we're stamping in. So we're going to stamp that right in the center of the banner and then we can sprinkle on our white heat embossing powder and then we're going to heat that up with our heat tool and that's going to give us a bright white shiny sentiment and I just love heat embossing in white. I think it always looks just so pretty. I'm going to attach this banner with tape runner as well right along those leaves right at the bottom and then we can attach our whole frame. Now vellum is always tricky because you can see adhesive through vellum so we're being very careful here of where we're putting the adhesive behind the cats, the leaves and all along that frame and that's it. And then we can attach that right down on and how gorgeous is that? I love the way the vellum is diffusing that pattern but not completely covering up. It's so fun. It's such a cool way to highlight a cool stenciled background. So here we have a standard size card at five and a half by four and a quarter. We're going to add some tape runner and layer our whole card base on top. And now our stenciled background card is all done and I just love it so much. It was so fun to combine a bunch of different ink colors to create a really cool multicolored stencil background and then adding on the glitter. Oh my goodness, I love doing that too. And then the vellum is such a cool way to create a background for a stamp scene, but still let your stencil background be the star of the show. So next up, we have some gorgeous cards by the design team. And first up, this card by Elena is just beautiful. I love that she used soft browns and soft reds on a craft background. So gorgeous for fall. This card here by Elise is so beautiful and she did something really unique. She inked up her background and then she went back over it with stencil paste in both the pearl and the glitter. And that is a really fun mix. I just adore how Tammy created such a beautiful background and then used the same colors to ink blend the scene for her cute little mice. It's so stunning and beautiful and this color combo is just so pretty. This card by Leticia is so cool. I love that she added glitter all over her background to add a really fun textured and pretty look. 
Here, this card by Mindy is so beautiful. I love how she has very soft pastel-y colors for fall. It's really stunning, and the glitter she added on top just makes it even more perfect. And then here is the card by Grace that inspired me to make mine today. It's so fun and cute. I just love the colors she used too. Audrey is letting her gorgeous stencil background be the star of the show by just layering a stamp sentiment over top. So beautiful and fun, and I love how she added that fairy dust stencil paste as well. And here Kara inked up some of her leaves with the gold stencil paste, which is so gorgeous. And make sure to check out the intro to stencil paste videos for more beautiful cards using the gold stencil paste. And then this is another card by Kara that is so fun. I love that she used craft as her background. It's perfect for this beautiful fall leaf, gorgeous look. And then here, I love what Yanea did. She stenciled with the white paste over pattern paper to create a really, really cool look. So pretty and fun, and I can't wait to try it. And then here, this card by Shari is so beautiful and so fun, and I love how she added the gold paste to just little tiny accents all around the pattern. So we can't wait to see how you guys use these new stencils, so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!